Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I am showing you today a envelope pocket idea that we're going to use as a challenge for January inside the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. This is a simple little envelope pocket that you can use in your junk journals. You could also use this to give as a gift to others. I'm using a grocery sack. So I've got a grocery sack here. I'm not even sure what size it is technically. I'll give you the measurements in the description box about what I used. And I took that and cut it down and then I've altered it. This one I used gel prints and stamping. This one was layers of scrapbook paper, some other paper that I sprayed with Tattered Angels and decorated. Here's another one with some gel prints. And then here's another one with gel prints in a Christmas theme. So let's get started and I'll show you what this is all about. I've got a paper sack here and I'll measure it. It's approximately 17 inches by 12 inches wide. I use this one to make my pockets because it worked out perfectly that the way that the gusset is made on this helped me be able to create my little envelopes. So to start with, I've got a paper cutter here. I'm going to trim off because I don't really want this piece right here in the rough edge in case it's torn. And I'll cut this off with my paper cutter. And then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to make a five inch cut all the way down, cutting off this top portion of the bag. And I found that if I work with it, I can get three of these cuts. So if I cut this piece right here and cut the bottom off, then I can fold this out and I can cut it two more times. But we're not going to do that for time savings. The next thing I did was I had this strip now. I just folded it in half to find my center right there. And then I'm going to put it in here and cut it. Then I took this portion and on this fold in here, I cut it. So I had this long piece and I cut it in half here and that ends up with these pieces and that's what I'm going to use to make my envelope. All right, so now I've got this piece of paper sack. Now, if you don't have paper sacks, use old book pages, use some junk mail, use anything that you have on hand. I'll give you the measurements of this. Of course, it's five inches wide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine and a almost nine and a half inches long. It'll vary depending on your paper. Make them according to the size that you need for your journal. I generally make an eight and a half by 11 folded in half journal so that it's five and a half by eight and a half tall. So the next thing I did was I decided that I wanted this pocket to come down or envelope and this piece I want to overlap right here. So I'm just going to fold this down just a little bit. It's about an inch and a half deep. Just kind of depends upon how I uh, cut this. I've got my bone folder here and I'm going to score this really well. Now I'm thankful that this is a blank paper sack. There's nothing on there. If it had printing on it, I might flip this around and fold it the other way so that the printing is on the inside of my journal or my pocket. So the next thing I'm going to do is figure out what I want to decorate this with. I've got a gel print that I made a while back and I thought it might be pretty to cut a piece of this to go right here. And then maybe I'll cut another strip to go across the top. So I'm going to get my other paper cutter out. So in here, if I want this to be a nice little bordered piece, it needs to be about two and a half inches of a strip. So I have a two and a half inch strip. And then I know this is five inches and I want it to have a little bit of a border all the way around. So if I measure this, it should be approximately four and a half inches. So that piece will go in here. So it kind of leaves me a little bit of a border 
all the way around. Now I need a strip up here. I generally just cut a one inch strip. So I'm going to use the same gel print, but flip it around and cut a one inch strip. Normally I can make two or three out of a piece of paper. So if you have some scrapbook paper, maybe you've got a digital image that you want to use, you can cut that up and make it into smaller bits to put on here. And again, I'm going to make this four and a half inches. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to apply Distress Inks to all the edges, and I've got Walnut Stain here. So I'm just going to go around the edges to kind of vintage it up, grunge it up a little bit. It finishes that edge. I feel like I need more ink on my pad, so I'm just using my reinker, and I'll just kind of put a little drop in the middle and then use the dauber to kind of spread that out. I've also got a journal card that I want to put on the inside, and I think what I want to do is go ahead and use a little bit of this paper. So what I may do, just so that I have a piece for later on to make another pocket, I'll cut this down to be four and a half inches. And now I have this little scrap that I can use on here. And then I'm going to do the same with this long piece, and I can save those for another project, and I'm going to use those on my cards that I want to put with this. I find that I like to stamp the background so that it has a little bit more to it. You'll see on the Christmas one where I stamped around the edges just a little bit. I did it on this Christmas one as well. On these, because they had gel prints, I used the gel print as the edge and decorated. Actually, this one I painted with paint and then stamped over the top of it. You can see where I did acrylic paint around it. I've got my henna mandala stamp. It's a brand new stamp that I just added to my shop. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to open this up and stamp it. And then I'll show you that. See how that just really makes that much better in the background gives me a nice pattern i'm going to do the same one here and then i want to stamp on the inside so we'll kind of come in let it overlap so you kind of get that look on the inside and since i've got this stamp out i'm going to go ahead and stamp it on this little bookmark that i'm making and then i'll stamp it on this card i'm going to kind of put it in the corner and this piece can go, maybe I'll put it in that corner so you can see that piece. I may not use this piece. You know, I cut things, but sometimes you don't have to use them. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to glue this piece down on my flap. Now, if you have collage papers or mop-up papers, you could also use those. I am going to go to the sewing machine. You don't have to. If you don't want to, you can just glue it. But I'm just putting enough glue to hold it in place. I've decided I'm going to use this little piece down here in the corner, so I'm just going to glue it down. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is go to the sewing machine. I'm going to stitch around this piece. Then I'm going to stitch across the top and the bottom, close it, and then stitch down the sides here so that'll close my envelope. I have a regular sewing machine. I have it set up with regular thread, a regular needle. I've got it set on a zigzag stitch. So my machine's electronic, so I've got it at 2.5 by 2.5. What I recommend is test your machine. Maybe sew on like an index card and then write on there what settings you used to make that stitch. And then that way, if you're trying to figure out, okay, how did I do that last time? Well, you can go to your index card and you'll have a sample of what you did. All right, let's stitch. You want to make sure that you don't have wet glue when you go to sew or it'll gum up your needle. It'll also tear your paper. All right, so now I'm going to stitch around the top and the bottom here. And I'll fold it close and I'll stitch down the sides. And there is the envelope sewn together. I've got a couple of things from Calico Collage. I think this is from one of her shabby, small ephemera sets. And I've got a page out of a hymnal. I'm just applying some distress inks to the edges of it. I thought this might look kind of pretty if I put maybe this rose image from Calico Collage on one side. 
And then I have the word vintage that I could put up there. Just basically making a little collage. So I'll glue this down. I'm going to make this a tuck spot. So I'll just put glue across the bottom and up the side. And then we'll add the word vintage here. I've got a little scrap of fabric. I want to punch a hole in the top of here. This can be a tag that can go in the back. And I'll just poke this through. You can tie it in a knot if you like. I found that I really like when my journal cards and tags lay flat. So I'll just quickly stitch right across there. All right, so I just stitched across there. So this is going to be in the back here because if you sew this down or glue it on the sides on your page, then you'll have a pocket in the back. And then I want this for a journal card inside, but I'm not quite done here. I think what I want to do is I've got a scrap of paper here. Let's look at my words. These are some of my word sets. So do I want to use a short word? Let's do whimsical on this little strip of paper, and then that'll fit on there. And I think I've got a little scrap of fabric that we can use. And that is from the quirky words, whimsical. I save all my little scraps of paper. I have a little bin that I put them in so that when I need to do a little word phrase like this, it'll fit right on there and I don't have to figure out what size to cut it. And I think what I wanna do is cut this fabric. Getting my fabric scissors out. And then we'll put that right there. I think that'll be cute. I don't. I don't know if I want it in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and glue this on the fabric and then play with it for a moment. It's okay to change your mind. Okay, I will put it in the middle. All right, this is going to go in the pocket inside. I did make this a tuck spot, so let me see if I can find a card that I want to put right in here. I have a little journal that I made with pockets. So what I did was I took some clear acetate. I put the best glue ever on the backside, let that air dry, and then stuck them down where I wanted, and then I stitched around them. What if we put the little library card? Is that too little? Yeah, that's too little. Maybe this would be cute. Okay, I think I like that, so it's a little bit sticking up in there, and this is from the Dancing Dragonflies kit. I think I like that. Okay. Let's apply some distress ink. Sometimes I put them in my little folder or book without applying distress inks. Okay, that's gonna go there. Now, if your envelope's popping up too much and you don't like that, let's make an altered paper clip real fast. I'll do it really simply. Oh, and I've got a little, a little tag. We'll use that too. You know, one way to do this is just to uh, attach a piece of fabric. And let's see what I've got here. I've got this pretty little pink piece. Let's use that. I'm just going to pull it up to the top, kind of crinkle it together, and then I'll go over to my sewing machine and stitch on there. In fact, I've got a little piece of lace. I'm going to cut a piece of that too. And then stitch this into place right here. So now we've got this little piece that sits on here. And then that can go there. Then we have this little, I'm gonna angle it just so that it holds it in place, pretend it's glued to a page. And then I'll have this little thing in here and I have this little tag I saw that could also go in there. So there is a pocket envelope that you can then glue to your page. So I'm just grabbing an existing journal page and if you wanted, you could just glue this down on the sides and then you have this cute little pocket on your journal page. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing just my take of making these little cute pocket envelopes out of a grocery sack. 
use your scraps, use your pieces and pieces that you have, and let me see what you create. Go over to the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group, look for the event, and share your creation in there. I'm going to be giving away a couple of prizes to people who participate. You're no obligation to buy anything. Just share what you're working on. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Now I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time, except when I'm on vacation. I'll have some recorded videos on those days. And do check out, like I said, the Facebook group as well as my description box down below for anything that you may need question-wise. Go ahead and use the comments down below to ask questions or tell me what you thought of this project. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fabulous day. Bye.